الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم بعد so today we're going to talk about a very important hadith of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which is has a tremendous benefit for us that this is an important rule or principle that you need to learn while you're young to practice all of your life to be a better believer, a better Muslim. Okay? This hadith, the subject of this hadith is not getting attached to the dunya. And who knows what the dunya is? What's the dunya? What does that mean? The dunya means this life. It means this worldly life, that which we experience with our senses in this world, the, and the materialistic life, this worldly life, the life we live in now, that you should never get too attached, because you don't know if a, how much time you have in this, in this world. We don't know. And we should never get too attached to the things and the people in this world even. We love our family, and we love doing good for other people, but we should never become so attached that if those people leave us or they die or something happens to them that we become destroyed, that we don't have any purpose anymore. Because what's our purpose? What is it? Why, is, why are you here? Why are you here in this life? Allah created you for what? To worship Him. To worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ma jinnu wal ins? Allah said that I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping Him. So that is our purpose, our divine purpose. So we should never get too attached to materialistic things, meaning cars and money and businesses and this. It's okay to have cars. It's okay to have money. It's okay to have a business. But don't let it be in your heart. Don't let those things be the things that drive you and make you wake up in the morning. But rather, wake up remembering the loss of Panatala and use those things, use your money to make you closer to Allah. عن أبي أباس سهل بن سعد الساعدي رضي الله تعالى عنه قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله ظلني على عمل إذا عملته أحبني الله وأحبني الناس فقال ازهد في الدنيا يحبك الله وازهد وازهد فيما عند الناس يُحِبَّكَ النَّاسِ Hadith Sahih In this hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, A man came to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and he said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, show me something that it, show me a deed that if I do it Allah will love me and the people will love me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not indulge in this life and Allah will love you. Meaning, don't become too attached to this life and Allah will love you. And do not ask or be uh, demanding of the people and the people will love you. And this is a sound hadith. This hadith shows us the importance of a zuhd the dunya. And we're going to talk about what zuhd means from what some of the scholars uh, say about this term zuhd. Zuhd, it means basically, and let's, let's look at it. Some of the scholars, they first and foremost, they mention a zuhd fi dunya, that if you don't engage in the dunya, loving this life so much, some of the benefits you'll gain are this. For one, you'll have ihsan. That means, you know, like in the hadith of Jibreel, and ta'budullaha ka'endaka tara, fa'inna mishukun tarahu, fa'inna hu yara. That you'll have surety in your ibadah, that you know that Allah is watching you. And also, that, that uh, some of the other uh, benefits of zuhud, and the, the, the benefits of Allah loving you. I'm sorry, these are the benefits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you is that you will also have tawakkul on Allah, that you'll depend on Allah, you'll rely on Allah. 
and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, that you'll be just. You'll be just in, and fair to the people, Rashad. That if you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love, then you will be just with the people. Also, you will be patient and you will be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearing His commandments and fearing going into the haram thing. This is taqwa. Taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the things that help to increase your love for Allah and they're the result of your love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you. And also making tawbah, being repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the scholars, they mention that zuhud, for example, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he explained that zuhud means Turk ma la yanfa fil akhir. He said it is leaving those things which will not benefit you in the hereafter. Do you understand what that means? That means leaving those things that if you do them, they're not going to help you get to Jannah. They're going to help you get away from Jannah. For example, a person who loves for example, video games, meaning that, not that they like to play them, but they love them, that's the only thing they care about in this world. Some people really are like this, you would never believe it, but some adults, they love video games so much, that is their whole life. They can't live without the new password to, to the secret code to get in this game, and to win this game, and get to the next level in this game. They love it so much, so some people go to the level of worship, that they worship those video games. They love them. They can't live one day, one hour, hardly without it. That is something that doesn't benefit them. That will not help them get closer to Allah. Ever, never. What any video game is never going to help you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So someone who who does something that the Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, leaving those things which don't have any benefit to you, this is good. Imam Ahmed, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that Zuhud is of three different types. He said the first type is Zuhud al awal which means the general Zuhud. That means, in, and he described it as leaving the Haram. If you leave Haram, this is the type of Zuhud. The second type of Zuhud that he explained, Imam Ahmed ibn Anbu, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he explained that Zuhud al khawas the Zuhd al khawas this is the, the specific Zuhd. And he said that it is leaving, it is leaving the extra things from the halal. Meaning you know something's halal, but you decide to leave those extra, those extra things which they're lawful, but they're not necessarily going to benefit you that great. So you leave extra indulgence. You know this certain kind of food. It's halal, but you don't, just indulge in it because it's expensive and it's this and this and this. You know, the extra things that are halal. It's halal to do, but from zuhud and, uh, and, and, and being humble, you leave it, even though it's halal. The third type of zuhud Imam Ahmed mentioned is the zuhud al arafin He said this is the zuhud in which you are leaving, busying yourself with anything that busies you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that it doesn't help you remember Allah and it doesn't help you remember the Akhirah. And this is similar to what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, that leaving those things which have no benefit. Because if it doesn't help you remember Allah, then it has very little benefit. Okay? It, and it has no real true benefit. Maybe there's something you're not thinking about Allah, but you can still make vicar. If you like to bike ride, for example, you can make vicar when you bike ride. You can say bismillah before you get on your bike and seek Allah's protection that you don't fall and you can enjoy yourself and go on the trail and remember Allah and see His signs. Come in and up. There's vicar in that. You're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you're doing something that has no remembrance of Allah, then it has very little benefit. And Allah doesn't, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. And the Prophet also mentioned that the dunya is not really anything to Allah. It doesn't mean anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we should never indulge so deeply in this worldly life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the surah that we all know, Father subhanahu wa ta'ala, al dunya. He was speaking about those people 
He said, rather they love the life of this world. And what's the other part of the ayat? They'll took the dunya will will the dunya will will akhira that the that the akhira the the, the 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 hereafter is better for you and it's and it's lasting. But this life is going to go. This life, everything you see and that you know in every person you know in this life, everyone you can think of is going to die. Every flower that you see in front of the house or wherever you see every tree is going to die. Every cat that you see walking around the block is going to die. All this doom is going to go. These nice buildings or whatever, it's all going to go. The only thing that is going to last is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hereafter. What Allah has in store for the believers in the hereafter. Jannah for those, that's going to last. And Jahannam for the, for the Kafirim, for those who disbelieve in Allah. And those who are disobedient to Allah. That's going to last for them. Please quit doing that. So those things, the things that are going to last, is the Akhirah. So don't get too caught up in this life. Let's look at some of the benefits we gained from this hadith that the Shaykh mentioned. We'll be very quick. One of the things is that this hadith is an encouragement to seek the knowledge. That it should encourage you to seek the knowledge because what is one of the most beneficial things you could do and beneficial things you could learn is about what? About Quran uh-huh. and, uh, and the Sunnah. And the Sunnah. Quran and the Sunnah is Islam. So one of the most beneficial things you can do is seek the knowledge. Learn more about who Allah is and how to worship Him. And learn, learn more about the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and how to worship Allah based on the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So that's the highest thing you can do is seek knowledge. Also, another benefit is that this hadith shows us to ask the people of knowledge. And another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith shows us is that we should strive, we should try our best to gain the love of Allah. We should try to... We, it's not that you just love Allah, as the ulama, used, as some of the salaf used to say. The affair isn't about you loving Allah, but the affair is how to get Allah to love you. This is how the salaf of Saleh, what they used to say. But some groups, like some of the Sufi people, they believe that, hey, we love Allah, we love Allah. That's what they claim, but they don't follow the sunnah. They don't zikr Allah like the Prophet sallallahu made zikr. So they don't really love Allah, they claim they love Allah, but they want to get closer to Allah by their way, not the way of the Prophet Sallallahu So then they don't get the love of Allah. So your goal, your and my goal, our goal is, is to love Allah and have Allah love us. And how do we have Allah love us? It's by doing good deeds. And being in the in the law you hit us uh you when you hit gold with the Tahirin. Allah loves those people who are pure. Allah loves those people who are patient. Allah loves. This is one of the characteristics, the divine things, the, the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Also, this hadith, as I just said, it affirms the sifa or the characteristic, the divine characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He loves. Another benefit of this hadith is that it warns us from getting involved in the, the dunya, in this life, in this in the materialistic life, by loving it, worshiping it, wanting to be like this person, wanting to follow this person, wanting to dress like this person, wanting to have the nice nicest things. And we need a lot of gold, we need a lot of diamonds, we need buildings, we need all this stuff. But getting involved in loving this world and getting attached to it, this hadith shows us that we shouldn't do that. Also another thing this hadith shows us is the importance of having zuhid. You know, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving off those things that don't benefit us. And there's many, many other benefits of this hadith. Also, this hadith shows us that uh, we should also try to get halal rizq. We should not try to get the haram. The haram will never benefit you. Even if you get a big loan from the bank and it has riba, it has interest on it, that will never benefit you, really. The people think it's good. They get a new house, they get cars, they get this, new suits, and they think they're real cool, and they're like this, and this, and this, and this. But all of that haram is only getting them more sin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that He makes war on the people who make riba. If you take interest, Allah makes war on on those people. 
Who in the world can stand up to a lost Paracal's war? No one. If you think these other countries are big and mighty, and they hurt people, and they, you can stand up to them, it's difficult enough for that. But never. No one will be successful if Allah makes war against them. So we want to get halal risk. Another benefit of this hadith, and I'll just get it there, is that we should also, this hadith shows us, we shouldn't ask people for a lot of stuff. They said we should rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be the Allah. If you seek help in something, seek help from Allah, as the Prophet sallallahu said. Seek help from who? Who should you ask? Allah. So should you sit in the mosque, in front of the mosque, and beg people for money and stuff if you don't have that much money? No. You should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. If you absolutely have nothing, you're going to die then maybe in those situations you should ask people. If you need, in your desperate situation and you need help, we need help sometimes from the creation, yes. But first go to Allah. First go to Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the end this side of Allah. If you seek help, seek it from Allah. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.